Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with another How to Play video. And in this one, we'll be talking about the man whose bike is a tool for justice, Last Rider Crow. As with all of these How to Play videos, I'll be going super in-depth and covering almost everything you could want to know about the character, including things like stats, skills, some possible end-game equipment builds for you to try out, voice actor trivia, and even matchup knowledge for PvP, if that is your thing. Without wasting any more time, though, on an introduction, Let's just jump right into it and talk about Last Rider Crow stats. Last Rider Crow is a light knight of the Pisces Zodiac symbol, which means he shares a stat line, oddly enough, with only his non-Moonlight 5-star counterpart, Crow. Taking a closer look at his stat line, he has 839 attack, 752 defense, 6,405 health, 100 base speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, no starting effectiveness, and 18 starting effect resistance. This translates to decent starting effect resistance and the highest defense amongst all knights in Epic 7 and the second highest defense, I believe, overall amongst all characters in Epic 7. The rub with the stat line is very low speed at 100 base and 6,405 health is average for something like a warrior class, but it's pretty low compared to other knights in Epic 7. As a bit of trivia before moving on to the skill section, in the English dub of Epic 7, Crow as well as Last Rider Crow is voiced by Bill Rogers, who is the current voice of Brock from Pokemon and also voices various other Pokemon such as Lucario. You could also hear him as Yurian in Street Fighter V. In the Japanese dub of Epic 7, Crow and Last Rider Crow are voiced by a titan of the voice acting industry in Yuichi Nakamura. You could hear him as Hawks in My Hero Academia, Moomin Rider in One Punch Man, Greed in Full Metal Alchemist, Hazuma in Blaze Blue, Bruno Bucciarati in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and finally, the one that probably most of you are familiar with, Satoru Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen. All right, let's have some fun. Last Rider Crow's S1 is Punishment. It has a 0.7x attack multiplier, as well as a 10% max health multiplier. It grants Crow a speed buff for one turn. Huh. I'll show you how I do things. Compared to other health scaling moves in Epic 7, this one's okay. Nothing super special to write home about in terms of damage numbers. The major selling point, of course, being the one turn speed buff, which is really going to help out with his S3 mobile weapon Siegfried when we talk about that skill. But before that, we have to talk about his S2 passive, code number 00. After Crow is attacked, it decreases his skill cooldowns by one turn. If that attack is an AoE attack, then it decreases his skill cooldowns further by an additional one turn. Additionally, it grants a barrier to all allies for one turn. That barrier strength is proportional to 7 to 10.5% of Crow's maximum HP, depending on Malagora. The barrier effect can only be activated once per turn. We've talked a lot about barriers here on how to play in the past, and I'm going to be honest with you, 10.5% of the caster's max HP, it really doesn't cut it. It's pretty bad most of the time. Our tanks or bruisers are around 15 to like 22% HP scaling for the barriers, and for soul weavers, it's usually around 20 to 30%. So it's definitely low in terms of durability. It's also a one-turn barrier when most barriers that we talk about are two to three turns. On top of that, it's the most niche barrier out of most of the barrier granters in Epic 7. It only triggers on an AoE attack. So overall, I feel like aside from the skill cooldown reduction on code number 00, it's not exactly a really strong passive. Last Rider Crow's S3 is his signature skill, Mobile Weapon Siegfried. You acquire three souls upon use, and it has a 7-8 to eight turn cooldown depending on Malagora. It is an AoE attack with a 0.3x attack multiplier, a 6% max health multiplier, and finally a 0.1125% speed multiplier. It grants immunity to all allies for two turns. This move also penetrates the defense of all enemies by 100%, but it cannot trigger a critical hit as a drawback. The damage of this move increases by 20% every time the skill is used, up to a maximum of 60%. Shall we bring this to a close? I'll pierce straight through you. Let's defy the odds. 
Mobile Weapon Siegfried is one of those skills that has a very strange multiplier compared to other skills in this game. It has a max health multiplier, which, while not rare, is kind of uncommon. There's more attack scaling moves in the game for sure. But it also has a speed multiplier, which is the rarest multiplier usually in the game. So having both of them together makes it kind of an oddball skill. So let's take a look at a chart really quick so you guys can see where the damage on this move actually stacks up. This chart assumes, by the way, Last Rider Kral's base attack at level 60 with a I-90 sword, which is another 525 attack added to his base. You can see on the left column the health for Last Rider Kral. 6,405 is his base HP at level 60. 9,240 is again that same base HP with an I-90 helmet factored in. And then I decided to go with 20k, 25k, and 30k for our breakpoints. 20k because this is usually where newer players I feel like are going to end up with Last Rider Cry when they first start building him. And it's also somewhat close. I'd say maybe two or 3,000 HP lower than the really fast Last Rider crowds that play around 240 to 250 speed, which is why 250 speed is the max end for the speed threshold. Obviously, 100 speed would be the low end because that is the base speed of the move. 200 and 225 are the other two popular speeds that I commonly see on this character. 25k is kind of a midpoint between 20k and 30k, and it's close to where I feel like most intermediate and veteran players are going to be for Last Rider Cow, somewhere around 26 to 28k. 25k obviously is just kind of there to let you see the midpoint on it, but this is very close in terms of the damage. You're obviously going to get a little bit more. And then 30k is where someone famously like AB would play Last Rider Crow around 200 speed with over 30k HP. So I decided to include that HP threshold as well. And then obviously you can see at one stack, two stacks, and three stacks for all the different various HP ranges across the, the board. HP seems to give you a bit more value than speed. But the general takeaway should be that a fully stacked Siegfried, you can expect it to do somewhere between 47 to 54% more damage than the initial usage on this move. After looking at the table, it's pretty obvious to see that Siegfried is pretty strong in theory. It's an AoE true damage attack, and that means it's gonna put in a lot of work against characters that dodge and don't have a lot of defense, stealth units since it's AoE, and overall just generally squishy team compositions. The problem with mobile weapon Siegfried, as I'm sure some of you may have guessed, is its long cooldown. At seven turns, when Maximal Agord, there are often times where Last Rider Crow is only going to get to use this move one time in a match. Even with his speed buff on his S1 punishment, it just doesn't feel like it is enough. You have to have a real plan in mind when you choose Last Rider Crow. Otherwise, he's going to feel pretty bad compared to most of the other tanks that you could have chosen. Are we going to be pairing Crow with characters that have stealth so that that way all of our opponent's attacks will funnel into him? Are we going to draft him with characters like Conquer Elias who have a redirect to provoke, therefore enabling one character to go into Crow and give us the skill cooldown reduction from code number 00? Does our opponent have a team composition with a high concentration of AoE attacks? If the answers to those questions are no, then we have to have some way, I feel like, to generate souls on this character very early before he gets to his first turn. And that is because of his soul burn, which reduces the skill cooldown of mobile weapon Siegfried by two turns for the cost of 10 souls. I wouldn't say this is like an amazing soul burn, but if you're not going to get off two or three uses of Siegfried in a match, then again, he's going to feel a lot worse than most of the other tanks that you could have chosen in his place. When it comes to Malagora priorities, definitely max mobile weapon Siegfried. It should be pretty obvious at this point that this is the move that the entire character hinges on. So you want to have it up as early as possible and you want it to do as much damage as possible. After that, you can invest in code number 00 if you want as it adds extra survivability to the team. But overall, it's pretty lackluster compared to other barriers. I leave it to you if you actually want to invest in this skill. And then finally... The S1 Punishment, which is nothing really special or to write home about. Honestly, if you want to go for a low investment build, I think you could take plus 5 on Mobile Weapon Siegfried. And then after that, consider taking plus 5 at code number 00. I don't really think you need to put too much investment into Punishment. Last Rider Crow's build paths are as straightforward as the character is to play. Pretty much, just build tanky, press S3 when available, otherwise spam S1. Taking a look at Crow's standard build, I'm going to be on a speed set with a health offset. 
This is the most common version of the character from my research, contrary to popular belief. Taking a look at the offsets, you might think that immunity is the most common way to play the character, but it looks like a fair number of people are on the health set to supplement the character's low HP. Feel free to use immunity if you're worried about him getting defense broken. Otherwise, consider taking a resist set to have some effect resistance to you know resist those potential defense breaks from characters such as I Karina. Lastly, defense could also be something for you if you have the stats to make it work. Do note that revenge set is very similar to this version of Last Rider Crowd that I'm going to be talking about, so I'm not going to waste too much time and spend uh, another like minute or two discussing the possible build path. Everything except for the speed on the revenge set will work so if you want to go for like a 190 or 195 speed last rider crow with everything else the same on revenge set you are more than welcome to do so take a look at our desired stats we have 1455 attack this is last rider crow's base with a 990 sword defense is 1500 although you could go slightly higher at like 1600 or even possibly 1700 depending on your gear i feel like 1600 is the average case that i see for a lot of last rider crows HP is 26k. If you can't get this, just get it as high as you possibly can. For something that's reasonably speedy at the 210 or 220 speed mark, for about 28k I think is the high end. I think having 26k is pretty acceptable. 27k is also fine as well. Speed, like I said, is 210. This is kind of like the midpoint. Most Slash Rider crowds are kind of between, I'd say, 200 and like 220, 225, somewhere around that range. So anything in that ballpark is fine. If you see a lot of other content creators, a lot of your favorite players going for like 220, 230, don't feel like you absolutely have to do that. That's a mistake I made when I first got Last Rider Crow. I felt like he just wasn't playable if he wasn't 220 or 230 speed. I feel like that's nonsense because of how... Mobile Weapon Siegfried scales between HP and speed. There's kind of like a delicate balance. If you go slower but can balance it out with more bulk, you're going to hit as hard or slightly harder to make up for the speed loss. So don't sweat it. Critical hit chance and critical damage are based because this is not a damage dealer. And Siegfried, his only real damage skill to begin with, can't land a critical strike. So there's just no reason. Effectiveness is 0% because he has no debuffs in the kit. And then effect resistance you could go for zero if you want. I've written it down 100% here, and that's largely just for the people that want to go for a resist set. If you're looking to have some effect resistance on Crow, somewhere around 85 to 120, somewhere in that range is going to be perfectly fine. I, again, I have 100% written here, but it's not really needed for the calculations. You can do just fine with Crow at 1,500 defense, 26k HP, 210 speed, and just ignore the effect resistance. Taking a look at our right side gear here, I'm on a health percentage necklace and a health percentage ring. Although if you decide to go for effect resistance, more power to you. Just make sure you have those really high HP percentage subs and you're going to have flat HP on a lot of your uh, HP main stat rings and necklaces. Artifact is Arius, which is actually kind of strange because I don't think this character has great synergy at all with Arius. But considering that Arius is... One of the most important artifacts in the game, and in the current meta, there's not too many great places to draft it. You kind of have to draft your tank very early within like the first two picks. That's usually where Last Rider Crow is being picked and or contested for the most part. So it makes sense to put Arius on him. Like he can hold it just fine. It just recognizes it's not really super impressive. In the past, I've tried Portrait of the Savior so that, that way Mobile Weapon Siegfried can put up some very impressive numbers. Basically, if you're trying to play a cleave based Last Rider Crow, if you want to go a bit faster and go jump his speed up to like 230, 240. Uh, so you can get out ahead of people and kind of like cleave them with Portrait of the Saviors. That is something that you can absolutely try. Adamant Shield is something that you can pick if you decide to play like Last Rider Crow in tandem with somebody like Yoha, have like essentially two tank threats, that's an option for you. And then last one is Crown of Glory, which is kind of a specialist build. If you're playing him only into AoE compositions, like especially for like regular arena, Crown of Glory can do a lot of work because it synergizes well with code number 00. You get the barriers and you'll also get the AoE damage reduction. I leave it to you, but overall, Arius feels like the most generically safe option. I do want to give one more shout out to uh, Prophetic Candlestick. Kind of a meme build, but it is something you can absolutely try. I just didn't have enough space to fit it here on the spreadsheet. Take a look at the per piece average. We have 25% health, 11% defense, 8 speed, and then flat health if you're trying to not go for ER. And then, of course, ER if you actually are trying to get some form of resistance on this character. 
Next up, let's talk about the Lifesteal build for Last Rider Carl. This is the one that I personally use. The logic for this one's pretty simple. Essentially, if they're going to ignore your Last Rider Crow, you can use this S1 Punishment to kind of get a little bit of health kickback to kind of mitigate the damage share from Arius. And if they decide to focus him down, then obviously the big AoE damage from Mobile Weapon Siegfried will help sustain him and keep him in the fight. It's pretty good for the most part. Uh, my desired stats in this section are basically a different take on the ones from the speed build. So for whatever reason, if you like the stats that are here for the desired ones on the lifesteal, they will absolutely work for you on the speed build. Looking at the primary sets, I'm on lifesteal health. Health again being the most common offset for this character to supplement his pretty mediocre HP for a tank. Uh, if you are afraid of getting defense broken, then I highly recommend trying out immunity. Defense and resist are still things you can use. You do note here on the desired stats, I have 0% effect resistance. You could still go for 100%. I've just decided to exclude it so I can show you what a kind of tankier stat line looks like on Last Rider Crow, which as you can see is that 1600 defense we talked about before and the 27k HP as well. Speed is about 200. If you can't get this and you can only get like 195, that is still fine. You're obviously going to be slower than the speed set. Speed set is largely for people who want to kind of you know, make sure that they can hit the stats because Life Steel Set doesn't actually grant you stats. That's going to be the big challenge to make sure you have all the desired stats since you get no bonus on like the 25% from Speed Set. No critical hit chance or damage like before. Same with Effectus. And Effect Resistance, you could go 85 to 120 like we talked about. That is your personal preference depending on what kind of gear you have laying around. Taking a look at the right side gear. I'm on an HP percentage necklace and Ring is still HP percentage, but... Effect resistance could work if you have really high HP percentage subs with really strong flat HP on your necklace as well. Boots are speed because we need to take turns in a timely fashion. Artifact choices are all the same for all the same reasons as the previous version of this build. Looking at the per piece average, I'm on 29% health, 14% defense, 11 speed, and then I have flat health written here again. You'll notice that the percentage of stats needed has 114.5% health. Generally, I try not to go over 100% on this percentage of stats needed number because it becomes very difficult for most people to build the character. But you have to recognize that this character only really wants defense, speed, and health. So it's really important to have flat HP, I feel like, on things like your swords, your rings, and your necklaces whenever possible. That will bring that per piece average down. And it's not nearly as bad as the 114.5% makes it look. As always, let's round out this video with some matchup knowledge. As we discussed in the skill section, we need a plan when we're drafting Last Rider Crow in order to successfully reduce the cooldown of his S3, Mobile Weapon Siegfried. The best way to do that is to force our opponents to use AoE attacks. So we can use characters like Spectre Tenebria or Solitaria of the Snow. These characters are going to be sitting in stealth pretty much for the entire game and mandate that our opponent has some kind of AoE response, which obviously is going to lead to a ton of free shields, as well as a lot of damage from Siegfried. We could also pair Last Rider with characters like Conquer Elias for her redirect or provoke to send attacks in his direction. If our opponent is very AoE heavy, a character like Angel of Light Angelica is also pretty good. A very strong character in her own right, she's also very proficient against AoE damage dealers thanks to the built-in cleanse and skill nullifiers that she provides. The last two characters I want to talk about are Remnant Violet as well as Ocean Breeze Lulica. Remnant Violet in general is just very strong against AoE characters. He has that innate dodge chance, which means he can dodge a lot of AoE attacks. It's going to build up his focus, and he's going to be able to retaliate with his S3 Massacre. They just synergize pretty well together. Also, your opponents aren't really going to want to hit Remnant Violet because it's going to stack him up, which is a lot more scary, I feel like, to most players than just giving minus one turn cooldown to Last Rider Crow, so that's super good. And then Ocean Breeze Lulica is just a generically good support that can give you the defense buff, can give you the cleanse that you're looking for in the character, and just overall her S1 provides a lot of tempo for your team, a lot of cycling, which will allow you to get back to that mobile weapon Siegfried just a little bit faster. As far as bad matchups goes, there's actually a surprising amount of them. Injury-based characters like Alencia are not super good. You're an HP scaler. If you get your HP taken down really hard by somebody like Apocalypse Shrabi or Alencia, that Siegfried doesn't really have a whole lot of value. Being a tank, Straze is also a pretty bad matchup for you because his S3 Star Extinction kills you in one hit. 
Other tanks like Unbound Knight Arwell have a pretty decent matchup against you as well because she has that on-demand stun, and that can essentially delay Mobile Weapon Siegfried in your very first rotation depending on how things actually line up at the start of the fight. Yul has also another one that's pretty good as well. If you Siegfried, you might take her HP really low, and depending on how squishy your carries are and how many you have, a well-placed Symphony of Agony can lose you the game. There's two other ones that require a bit more setup, but I feel like I really want to highlight them. One is Inferno Kawazu. A lot of people like to play Navy Captain Landy with Last Rider Crow in this meta. If you get an unlucky counter or you use Mobile Weapon Siegfried, it will give the Vigor buff to Inferno Kawazu. And then, just like with Yulha, he can pick off a key target, and that can lose you the game. The other one is Operator Cigarette. Code Double O is a passive that triggers under a certain condition that your opponent actually triggers which means smart players know exactly when and where to trigger it. So a well-placed AoE attack from, say, Inos 2.0 at the start of a fight will then lead right into Operator Segret, just cleaving your entire team since you now have barriers, and that's pretty much her well-defined role. As for good matchups, anything that has a forced AoE, such as Bellion or Charlotte, is obviously going to be amazing for Last Rider Crow. And anything that has a high variance or a high chance of actually AoEing most of the time, like Lone Crescent Bologna or Navy Captain Landy, these are also going to be fairly good matchups for Last Rider Crow. There's other things that I would like to highlight as well. Certain debuffers that don't have innate stripping, such as Ambitious Tywin, are pretty bad against Last Rider Crow. That two-turn immunity is pretty massive if your opponent doesn't have a way to actually strip it. And certain characters that usually can control the board, like the aforementioned Tywin, Crow's pretty good into. And also, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Spectre Tenebria. Last Rider Crow is so good at protecting Spectre Tenebria that it feels really frustrating and difficult for a lot of players to play against. So naturally, if you see your opponent take Spectre Tenebria and you haven't taken a tank yet, Last Rider Crow is a fairly solid option because he's the only real tank that can hit hard with an AoE attack. So it makes sense that you'd want to, one, deny that power play, but two, have a tank that has some form of reach. And that's going to do it for how to play Last Rider Crow. Hopefully this video was of some help to you. You can help me out by liking the video or sharing it with a friend or a guildmate if you think it will help them. If I made any mistakes or forgot anything, let me know down as always in the comments below. If you want to see more how to play guides in the same style, feel free to check out the playlist on your screen now. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye bye now.